bumper crop of news from Steve with a rather croaky throat, so I'd better get started. Many, many of you use Gmail just as I do. The combination of the client or web-based reading and the near-perfect spam and malware protection plus the virtually unlimited mailbox size searching and archiving options, and it's all free. And now Google just added IMAP support, giving you another way to access your Gmail on your smartphone with even more options. Just enable it in on the Gmail site, settings, forwarding, and pop slash IMAP. I featured the Nokia E90 quite a bit in the last year, and any other users out there should make a beeline for Nokia software update to update to a major new firmware, 7.40.1.2, the biggest benefits of which are assisted GPS for lightning fast fixes and faster and generally smoother performance from the communicator as a whole, especially in the web browser. Apparently described by US Verizon executives as an iPhone killer, the LG Voyager comes across as a hybrid of both iPhone and Nokia E90, which is not to say it won't be any good, but it's US only for now, only has a tiny internal screen, a tiny battery, only a 2 megapixel camera that does have autofocus, and apparently no Wi-Fi. In fact, it's not even a smartphone OS, so I'm not sure why I'm giving it airtime. The Samsung i780 is a new messaging-focused device with an innovative optical joystick. Connectivity is fast with HSDPA and Wi-Fi and there's assisted GPS here too, along with plenty of RAM, A2DP, but a somewhat disappointing 2 megapixel camera. Looking for a free Wi-Fi fix in almost any UK town? McDonald's have started offering this in conjunction with the cloud and it works pretty well. You have to enter a name, email and postcode in order to get past the front screen, but if you're worried about privacy then you can leave these as junk input. Each free Wi-Fi session is a generous four hours and your biggest worry is going to be jostled by screaming school kids or having coke spilled over your precious smartphone. Still a good resource to note. New from iMate are two more in their high-end Ultimate series, the 6150 and 8150, both running Windows Mobile 6 of course. Both have graphics accelerated VGA touchscreens, HSDPA, Wi-Fi and GPS with the 6150 being more PDA-like and relying on stylus input, and with the 8150 having a widish numeric T9 keypad. In addition to a suite of unique iMate software, both devices also come with XGA resolution TV out. If your S60 smartphone doesn't have this new Wizzy search already built in, you know, the one which searches local content as well as online, quick matching, note that Search 4.0 is now free to download for many devices from Nokia. It won't integrate into the standby screen as on the N81 and N95 8GB, but it's still a cool freebie. T-Mobile's Shadow, also known as the HTC Juno, is a new Windows Mobile 6 standard smartphone distinguished by an extra faves front end, giving shortcuts to your top five contacts. The Shadow itself is a smart slider with two megapixel camera, Wi-Fi, and an interesting rotating jog dial on its face. I've had the Nokia N81 8GB at the smartphone show office this week, but I'm deliberately not going to review it properly until Nokia finally, finally launched their Engage Games platform, one of the cornerstones of the N81's design. In the meantime, it's got a great touch-sensitive navi wheel, great music quality and controls, but shame about the plastic keypad front and back. At this moment, there's still no sign of HTC's promised iPhone-like on-screen keyboard for their touch range, which is why I've bumped my look at the touch and touch jewel until show 47. Watch this space. So never mind my earlier face off between the Nokia E90 and the HTC Advantage. Although both were flagships at the time, the Advantage was a very impractical as a really mobile device and there was ever really only going to be one winner. In the meantime, HTC have gone for broke and updated their Titan bestseller, producing this, the Kaiser, adding GPS, a tilting screen, newer software and a better camera. Is it enough though to topple the all-conquering Nokia E90? Let's see. By the way, the Kaiser is also known as this, the AT&T Tilt, the Titan 2, of course, the MDA Vario 3 and countless other rebranded names around the world. Raw specs here are virtually identical, with HSDPA, that's 3.5G to you and I, plus the usual suspects, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, of course. There's excellent voice telephony for each, both traditional network and voice over IP. But the E90 has to win out for phone use simply because in its closed mode, well, it's, it's a phone. Whereas the tilt doesn't fare so well in the up-to-the-ear test and making calls in the real world. Data speeds are similar, but the tilt is really limited by the, the quarter VGA 320 by 240 pixel screen, and to be honest, also by its use of Pocket Internet Explorer, which could really do with a big update. 
You're best off sticking to simple and mobile websites in contrast to the Nokia E90 with its high resolution 800 by 352 pixel display with which you can use just about any site of any design. Surely the Tilt deserved a VGA screen uh, or even bigger as on Toshiba's G900 despite Windows Mobile 6 not using such screens to best advantage. A larger screen is absolutely vital for web work. Email is a much closer contest, perhaps not surprising given Microsoft's rich Outlook and Exchange expertise, although the E90 can also run BlackBerry's client in addition to Mail for Exchange 2 and half a dozen corporate push email systems. A win for the E90 though, overall, 9 points to 7. Now Office in this context means the handling of desktop produced Microsoft Office documents and both the E90's Quick Office and the Tilt's Office Mobile open most older Word, Excel and PowerPoint documents without drama and they do a passable job of returning them to the desktop without too much loss in formatting and structure but both could do with an upgrade. On the E90 there's a pay for upgrade to Quick Office 4.5 that gives near perfect round tripping and a promised upgrade to version 5 in a few months that will handle Office 2007's XML based documents while Microsoft seem about to release, and for several months now, a similar upgrade to Office Mobile 6.1, which will also handle Office 2007 files. But neither solution is here yet. The presence of a touchscreen here does make all Office work slightly easier, and as a result, I'm going to award this round to the tilt, just, with 8 points to 7. OK, so these devices were made for productivity and for work, but these days, Video and other multimedia have a very definite place in business, and hey, we all need a little entertainment every now and then. Both the E90 and the Tilt do a passable job of playing back suitable video files, but neither is compatible across the board. The E90 handles H.264 encoded MP4 video, that's the new cross-platform standard, but can't handle WMV or DivX or Flash video out of the box, whereas the Tilt plays WMV, of course, but falls down on H.264, DivX and Flash as well. I'd place money on both S60 and Windows Mobile 6 being able to handle Flash video by next year, but in the meantime, neither device handles video well on its own, and each benefits from third-party software. The E90 is also hampered by the strange screen aspect ratio, and the tilt by the physically low resolution. Music on each device is more successful, though neither have dedicated music controls, with the E90 supporting Microsoft's WMA format and having two loud stereo speakers and a reasonable quality stereo headset. The Tilt loses out here with a really tinny and tiny mono speaker and with a poor quality proprietary stereo headset. The music attributes just edge this category for the E90 at 7 points to 6. We live in a very visual age now where almost every news story is accompanied by images and video. Even if you're not a photo or video geek, you'll want the capability to shoot quality images or clips when needed, especially as you've just ponied up for a flagship device. The Tilt has one of the highest specified cameras ever seen in an HTC device. It's 3 megapixels in terms of resolution, although as you can see from these blow-ups, the optics do let it down with poor colour fidelity, while the Nokia E90 with a theoretically similar camera manages slightly crisper photos with more accurate colours and better handling of light extremes. Both cameras have unprotected lenses that pick up finger grease every time you pick up the device though, and both cameras' photos are quite a way short of those from, say, the Carl Zeiss lens Nokia N95, even when you set the latter to the same resolution. There's a big difference in terms of video capture. The Tilt manages the YouTube gold standard of quarter VGA at up to 15 frames a second. It even adds 352 by 288 pixel resolution uh, if needed, but with poor audio quality, while the E90 shoots successfully at full VGA resolution at up to 30 frames a second. Good enough to show to your friends on a DVD without being too embarrassed, although not anywhere near true camcorder quality in most light conditions. The tilt comes off worse in both areas, I'm afraid, so 9 points to the Nokia E90 versus a disappointing 7 to the tilt. At this price point, of course, built-in GPS is de rigueur, and both the tilt and the Nokia E90, with the latest firmware, use assisted GPS, also called quick GPS on the tilt, using the, the data connection to help speed up GPS lock times, and in both cases getting them down to a few tens of seconds at most. 
The tilt comes with very limited trial maps, but it's easy enough to load up the free Google Maps download version to get your whereabouts. The E90 comes with Nokia Maps built in. You can grab free world street maps over the air, but it takes a while and I found it easier to use their map loader utility to preload the maps onto microSD. Google Maps is available for S60 as well, and as on the tilt, in many ways, it's just easier and simpler to use this. A voice guidance is also a pay for option on the Nokia E90 via Nokia Maps, albeit for only a few euros on an as needed basis, say on a holiday. And there are plenty of commercial navigational solutions for both devices and both platforms. A tie, I think. If there had to be a winner here, then it would be the GPS enabled Google Maps rather than either device. Seven points each. Although HTC's build quality has gotten better over the years, there's still a gap between the cool metal construction of the Nokia E90 and the mainly plastic case of the Tilt. Or maybe I just have a metal fetish. The front face of the Tilt is brushed metal at least, but the device just doesn't seem as solid. Each device has its share of design and build defects though, all disappointing for such top-end communicators. The Nokia E90's weaknesses are the, the hard feel QWERTY keyboard and a catalogue of production problems with early devices, hopefully now sorted, whilst the Tilt's weaknesses are more ingrained. The screen's hard to read outside, especially in sunlight, while the E90's transflective screens remain very clear. The batteries on the weak side are with the Tilt at only 1350 mAh, the E90 has 1500 which combined with a, a slower processor gives significantly longer real-world use on a single charge. And the HTC device's keyboard isn't in all honesty any better than the E90 in terms of feel, and it loses out by having less keys, with the comma, for example, being a shifted character, and there being no feet to let you type with the tilt in tilted mode on a flat surface. Uh, also by OS bugs that cause some key presses to simply get lost, I found. A disappointing six points to the tilt here, Eight the ninety. When it was announced back at the start of the year, the Tilt Stroke Kaiser Stroke Titan II seemed packed with everything one could want. But Nokia's E90 and Toshiba's G900 raised the bar by introducing much larger screens. And given the price, you'd expect a flagship communicator to offer more than quarter VGA right now. And this is the Tilt's biggest limitation, with today's heavy emphasis on web-based tools and resources. The Nokia E90's hardware is superlatively built and the widescreen is generally a joy. The E90's limitations tend to be in software, but at least this is fixable with firmware updates. The scores throughout this head-to-head -head agree, with the E90 amassing 47 points compared to the HTC Communicator's 41. I honestly expected the scores to be closer, but the tilt disappointed in the flesh. The novelty tilting screen doesn't really add significantly to the now slightly tired Windows Mobile 6 quarter VGA design and there are a catalogue of other hardware disappointments. There's more to choosing a communicator than the device itself of course. A lot depends on the platform or specific third-party software you or your company may prefer and there's no doubting that there is slightly more add-on software for Windows Mobile 6 than there is for S63rd edition. But I know which of the two devices I'd rather be given for Christmas.